Hey guys, it's Matic and Serta here, and today we are going to be doing another uh, episode of the card tutorial series. So, in the previous episodes, uh, we got quite a bit of this thing working, uh, but obviously there are some things that we need to resolve. First off, physics, very bad right now. As you can see, the car sort of swings back and forth between being on one side and being on the other when you're turning even slightly. Uh, it can't go quickly because it'll flip, etc., etc. Um other major issue that I'd like to point out is that uh, right now we only have this one camera right and this camera is a little bit dull honestly so we're gonna fix all of that uh, with the camera today um, and you know hopefully you enjoyed this part this hopefully will teach you a little bit about C sharp as well not just uh, you know setting that bit up and so uh, I don't know why that anyhow uh, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to make uh, some new changes to the script. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new variable, uh, and this is going to be a private um, cam mode, right? And we're going to initialize, actually, here, sorry, forgot that, private uh, int cam mode, and we're going to initialize this as uh, zero, right? So we're going to make our default mode zero on this camera and uh, we'll be able to cycle through by changing the camera mode um, and I'll get into how we're going to do that specifically in a second so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up an if statement right? and as usual uh, we're going to need to take in some input here right? and we're going to say or sorry, not get button we're going to say get key down right? uh, just so that we only trigger this when we first press the key because obviously if we want to switch camera modes we don't want it to you know rapid fire just roll through the camera modes because that could cause some issues obviously there are problems with that so we're going to have get key down and then we're going to use uh, let's say C for camera right? Uh, I hope I haven't already allocated that to something if I have we can change this or the other thing anyhow uh, so now what we're going to want to do is we're just going to add in uh, some kind of functionality, right, where we can then change this camera mode. Uh, and what we want to do, if I just show you here, is we want to be able to go 0, 1, right? And uh, we're only going to be programming in two modes today, but however many we want, or however many we add, we want to be able to change this and extend it. So. I'm not going to write a bunch of if statements, you know, for each of these individual numbers or whatever or something complex like that. I'm just going to add functionality such that, say, we're, you know, going up to here, it would then wrap back, right? So that's what we want. We want this kind of effects um, where we experience overflow and just return to zero. So what we're going to do then is we're actually going to set up uh, a little bit of, of an operation here, a neat one. So we're going to do cam mode, right? Mod, or, uh, and then out here, we're going to say modulo 2 in this case, I guess. Uh, and we'll just do this, right? And uh, I'll explain how this works in a second. But basically, uh, that'll help us sort that all out. So what we're doing here, right, is the modulus operator, uh, when we modulus by 2, will give us the remainder of our operation rate. So if I have, say, uh, a value of 0, we're going to get 2, and we're going to modulus by 2, right? We're going to end up with 0. Actually, yeah, no, no, sorry. If I have a value of 0, we're going to end up with 1, and we're going to modulus by 2, uh, and we'll end up with a 1 as our return value, whereas if I have a 1 as an input, we add 1 to it, and we get to 2, but 2 is outside of our range, so we should cycle back. And you can see 2 modulo 2 is 0, so we're going to end up there. So in both of our cases, this works, and if you extend this list, you'll find that by just changing this number so that it's equivalent to the maximum, or the number of cameras, uh, slides, you know, plus 1, you will get this working perfectly every time. So that's everything for our first step. Now we can actually just demonstrate this working by doing a debug.log statement, um, as you always ought to in some of these cases, just to make sure that your code is working properly. We're going to open up um, unit again, and I'll just go into this console, 
and now that this groups have compiled we can run it you can see these are accumulating on this side now if I hit C it starts accumulating values of 1 if I hit C again back to 1 1 or back to 0 and then you know we can just swap between these right so that's nice that's working perfectly now we can go back into our script and we can actually start changing the way in which the car works and the way that we're going to do this um, well the way in which I would do it at least and the way in which I will teach you to do it is uh, by using switch statements and you may never have heard of these uh, but switch statements are actually very useful in virtually all programming languages um, in that take a lot less effort than if statements and they're just better practice so what an if statement will allow or a switch statement will allow me to do is like essentially handle like a bunch of if cases right so what I can do here is I can say um, actually sorry need brackets here right and actually for our input we'll put cam mode and this is just going to be case one like this right and that's how you do this but actually have this bit here. Um, we're gonna make this one our default case. Um, so basically, you know, a zero would typically be our default. Actually, I don't. I wrote default, but I. Oh wait, wait, wait. Okay. This is it. Sorry. Um, you don't put case before that. <coughs> that's the only one for which that's not the case. Uh, this is just the default case. So essentially, if we input zero or anything that's not um, greater than one, we're going to get this as our. D or, well, actually, basically, if we input any case number that's not listed here, or we input nothing, we're going to get this. So now, this is what we'll default to. Uh, and now we're going to add a new case, and it's going to be just case one. We won't add any other cases for now. And we can just copy and paste this code um, from here. And now we can actually get into the nitty gritty of making some changes to our stuff. We need this break statement. Okay, perfect. So now that that's all said and done, uh, we can actually just start working on this aspect of things. So as you might imagine, uh, you know, in most racing games, we don't just have an external view. We also have a view from inside of the vehicle, so from right here, as if you're the driver, you know, so first person. Um, and that's what I want to integrate today. And then in the future, we're going to do rear view mirror, you know, well, not, not a literal rear view mirror, but if you've ever played a racing game, you know, there's an option to, you know, press a button and end up looking at the track as if you're looking in a rear view mirror, sort of like look, sort of here, right? So that's that's what we'll add in the future, but right now we're just going to be adding the internal view, uh, and there are a lot of things that go into it, so I thought I'd make it its own video. So what we're going to be doing now is we're actually just going to change this. So when we're inside of the car, we don't want to lerp, right? Because we want to stay at one exact point where the driver's seat is. So we will just remove this entirely. We can just take this bit out as well. And, uh, yeah, we can take this damping section out. And we're just left with this nice little subscript. And this, so the only problem with this, right, is that we're going to end up with some more issues with some stuff that we're going to have to change. But essentially it's because we need new variables. Um, because if I show you right now, so right now, this is our game, right? As I move... The car moves within the frame of the camera, then I switch, and the camera is locked in place. Right, so the camera falls perfectly, regardless of the orientation of the car. Um, and that is not what we want at all. We want the camera to be inside of the car. We can't change that without some new variables. So we're going to get started with those. Uh, we're going to name a public float. Uh, and I'll just call this H2. Make this a zero public float. Uh, D2 equals 0F, and uh, actually we're going to add a third variable. We're going to call this our L, and uh, you may be wondering, what is this? Well, this is just going to be our um, length, our horizontal distance out from the car. So, like, obviously if we're, you know, in the car, we're not going to be, if you're sitting in the driver's seat of this thing, right, 
you're not sitting here at the very center of the car. You're sitting on this side, so we need to be able to tweak that value as well. And uh, we'll do that right now. So we're going to come in here, and we're actually just going to remove this stuff. So we can make this one H2, this one's going to be D2, and then this one is going to become our L2. And uh, now we can add one more value, and that one value is going to be, actually here I'll make this positive, uh, and you'll see why I guess in a second. Oh, oops, it wasn't L2, it was L. Um, so, we need to change this, because if I run it right now, we're going to be looking at the center of the car when I move this thing to the driver's seat, and that means we're going to be looking at some weird stuff, weird angles, right? Um, so we don't want that at all. We actually have to change this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, transform dot rotation equals focus dot transform dot rotation. And I think that that should be fine. Uh, and we'll see how that looks in a second. So you can see we're now looking perfectly at the center of the car. Uh, so now what we can do is we can go into our main camera. We can just come in here and we can change these values a little bit. And uh, we can just sort of take a look at it as we're doing it. And that looks pretty good. I do want to make sure I remember these. So 0 0.67, 0 0.25, and 0.35. 0.67, 0.25, negative 0.35, <coughs> right? So if we now run it, you can see it just defaults to that position now once we switch cameras. The only issue here, um, actually though, is that we are now, uh, you know, getting a really small angle, and I really don't like that. I, I think it should be a little bit larger. I also think uh, that this should be a little bit closer to the dash, so like that, right? Because this isn't this isn't working uh, for me. So we're gonna make that 0.28 now, just a little bit closer, a tad bit, and yeah, we'll make that just a tiny bit higher. So how we're gonna change that is uh, that we're gonna actually go into our main camera and we're gonna have to change that. Okay, so that I don't know. That defaulted to main camera anyhow. Um, usually this would be untagged, so if yours is untagged, make this main camera. And uh, what that'll allow us to do in here is that, uh, well, actually, okay, what that'll allow us to do is it'll allow us to set up um, changing FOVs. So essentially, what I can do is I can now go into the camera class for the game and I can say, dot main dot fov and that should give me yeah so field of view is an option now and I can make this like 80 uh, and that that should be okay maybe even 90 and if I then come in here make this one a different value oops there we go the original value was 60f I believe so I'll make it that uh, and then I come in here, we can actually just watch as this thing sort of changes. So you can see we can now view much more of the vehicle. And if I just zoom us in a little bit, just to actually bring that up. So I don't, I'm not a fan of that amount. So I'm going to say maybe 80 instead. And we'll try it out and just see how it looks. <coughs> Give it a quick check. That looks okay for now, at least. And you can see this is pretty interesting. Uh, if we... It's weird. I don't think that that really ought to be behaving that way. Huh. Anyhow, uh, right now that's fine, that weird little animation we're getting. Maybe if we try just uh, moving it over a little bit. Nope, still kind of wacky.
I don't I don't understand that. Anyhow. Ah, I know what it is. Okay, so once we do this, this thing immediately swings to look at the center of the car. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of a rough transition for us to have. So we will we'll fix some of that stuff later. Uh, but for now, it's okay. The transition doesn't have to look nice. Um, it just has to work. So that is fine. The only thing I really want to change here is that you can see if I switch cameras, I want to have this a bit closer, right? Um, and it works right now because I've already tinkered with this. Uh, just trying to make sure that everything's looking right with some of these scripts um, in advance so that I don't, you know, make some mistakes with this code here for you guys. Um, I did notice that this value, I, I don't know what it defaults to, maybe it's like 0.1 or 0.3 or something. I think it's probably more like this range. Um, this is going to cause issues for you if it's even remotely large. So, you're going to want to set this to like a really small value um, just so that you don't get any of these clipping issues so like if this is a larger value you know we're going to start to see parts of the car being clipped uh, if I try to sit inside of the dash with this perspective here like so if I try to move here you know if you're running too low in FOV or if you're running too low clipping value, you're going to have problems with a lot of this. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably going to wrap it up. You know, apart from, obviously, a few issues with some of this stuff, I would say, uh, and, you know, some of the stuff being like this animation that we have, I would say that this thing is pretty good looking. I'm liking a lot of this. Uh, not liking that at all, but, you know, is what it is at the moment. Um, as usual, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, um, and share it, obviously. Again, comments can be anything. Constructive criticism, criticism, feedback in general is welcome. Uh, tell me if you liked it, if you didn't like it, what you want to see in the future, what I can do better. Um, and just, you know, video ideas in general are good, uh, not just ideas for the series. Uh, yeah, so I, I really hope you enjoyed this video, um, and yeah, again, please remember to subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I think we're going to be doing some interesting stuff that you may like. We're going to do, you know, menus, changing our button default configurations. Um, we're going to be setting up, you know, FOV controls in the menu, uh, better braking lights, you know, because obviously these are kind of crappy in the long term better physics, drift physics, stuff like that. So all sorts of stuff. Um, I've already been trying to incorporate some of the viewer suggestions, such as the speedometer idea. Uh, I don't remember whose comment that was off the top of my head, but, uh, you know, uh, I will try to get that done ASAP. So, you know, again, I do take your comments into consideration if you have any, uh, and if you don't, just, again, you know, thank you for watching. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Peace.